Hi, my name is Ashley and I'm a mom of two little girls. I have a five-year-old named Kylie who is actually away at her first day at kindergarten today. And I have a three-year-old named Mia who is sitting behind me. She's decided to join me for today because she has a few more days till she starts school. But I've got a bit of a different kind of Montessori video for you. I've been thinking a lot about this idea of minimalism and decluttering. I've been doing a lot of decluttering in my own home over the last couple of months. And it just, it's really had me thinking about the idea that Montessori doesn't need to be expensive and you don't need to have all the things to do Montessori at home. So I was like, I think it would be really cool if I went to one of our local thrift stores here and just kind of like walked around and see what's available that theoretically, you know, you could use in your home as a Montessori parent. So that is exactly what we're doing today. I'm sitting in the parking lot right now. We just arrived at one of our local thrift stores and we're gonna go take a look around and see what they've got. The first place that I stopped was the furniture section. I found quite a few child-sized chairs as well as a small cabinet that I thought would be perfect for storing kitchen-related things. I also found a storage bench that I thought would be good for a foyer area, sitting down to put shoes on, just some potential extra storage space, as well as a small step stool that would be perfect for getting your child up to counter height. There were also a ton of pillows to choose from to help create a cozy little reading area, and just about a thousand picture frames and pieces of art that could be hung at the child's level to add a touch of decor to the space. Over in Toys and Games, I found this teeter popper, which I thought would be great for gross motor play, as well as this Green Toys cement mixer that could be used for open-ended play, an entire bag full of ocean figurines for some language work, as well as some other things like these connecting blocks for more open-ended play, a couple of sand buckets and shovels for some outdoor digging and exploration, an O-ball for infants to play with, and a whole slew of games and puzzles. I found a few children's puzzles that I thought had a manageable number of pieces that featured realistic looking animals, a map of Australia floor puzzle, and a couple of more academic oriented self-correcting puzzle sets. And for some fun family games, I also saw Jenga and Mousetrap. In the arts and crafts area, I found some Play-Doh, as well as an origami set and a bag of kinetic sand as well as this bag of markers and chalk, glue, and highlighters. For practical life, wallets and makeup bags offer practice with zippers and snaps, and there were also some umbrellas here. I also found this small collapsible laundry basket, this set of child-sized wooden clothes hangers, and for a self-care station, this wooden tissue box with pretty floral designs and a small mirror that could be hung on the wall. Moving on to the kitchen area, I found a couple of options for placemats or potentially some small work rugs and a few child-friendly kitchen appliances like this mini pancake maker, this mini magic bullet, which would be awesome for learning how to make smoothies, as well as this traditional style pop-up toaster, which is great for making toast, waffles, or any other kind of self-serve breakfast. I also found a couple of these dish drying racks for creating a dishwashing station, this plastic tray for storing silverware, as well as this metal one for storing cooking utensils. I thought that these airtight locking storage containers could be used for creating a self-serve snack area or potentially used somewhere else in the house too. And for cooking and baking, I found this small cutting board as well as a small colander for rinsing fresh produce, a couple of small loaf pans, a whole set of mini muffin tins, a set of nesting mixing bowls that were kind of small, and this measuring cup with a pouring spout and a shaker lid. For any work involving water, I saw these glass water dispensers, as well as all manners of different kinds of beautiful ceramic pitchers that were all child-sized. These could be used not only for things like pouring activities and meal times, but also for flower arranging. Speaking of which, I found a couple of really beautiful glass vases that could be used for exactly this purpose. There were also so many different little small ceramic or glass dishes and bowls and things like that that could easily be used for practical life work, especially for transferring activities or any other kind of work that might require a storage space for tiny pieces. Not only are these items beautiful, which helps to engage a child's interest in working with the activity, they are also delicate and breakable. In the Montessori approach, it's preferred to use real natural materials like ceramic and glass and since things are going to break from time to time as children learn how to be careful, 
buying them secondhand is a great way to go. This way you don't have to fret over it when something is inevitably broken. This same idea applies to a child's plates, bowls, and cups for use at mealtimes. And this thrift store definitely had no shortage of potential options that were perfectly sized for children. And in some cases, there were entire sets of them available too. For our final area of practical life, I found some options for use outside in the garden, lots of different pots and buckets and pails and things like that. And speaking of getting dirty, they also had a lot of small trash cans available as well. Another area with lots to explore was the baskets and trays. I did find a couple of small wicker baskets that would have been perfect for shelf work, as well as a couple of wooden ones that I thought would have worked great for either shelf work or for use in a shelf display. I also found a whole row of silver trays, which are not only attractive for shelf work, but also useful for practical life activities like polishing. And then finally, I also found a section of plastic baskets and caddies perfect for practical life materials like window washing or other general material storage. I also found a few other items like these glass spice jars that could be used for sensorial work like sound matching or smelling bottles, this beautiful silver lidded box with a velvet liner perfect for open and close work, and this plastic recorder for music activities. There was also an entire children's book section that I wasn't able to look through because I didn't want to interrupt this employee who was busy organizing it. All right, so we actually just got home. Mia fell asleep in the car seat behind me, so I'm just letting her take a little snooze before we go back inside. But oh my gosh, there were so many things, so many great finds at incredible prices. And that was just one thrift store. I'm in the Denver, Colorado area. So if you live locally here, that was an ARC thrift store. They have, I think they're like a little local chain. There's several different locations around here. I don't know if they're beyond this area, but they're great. And there are other thrift stores as well. So I'm just like imagining if that's what you could find, all of those things in one location, what the possibilities are if you were to actually hit up several different locations. So super cool. And it just goes to show you that, again, you don't have to spend a ton of money and buy like, you know, like top of the line, everything just to do Montessori at home. You really don't have to buy anything, but if you're looking for things to add to your Montessori home, definitely consider shopping secondhand because there, as you can see for yourself, so many great things that you can find if you know what you're looking for, especially when it comes to practical life and like secondhand furniture items and things like that. There's just, there are so many options out there. So I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, then please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you'd like more practical tips and advice for implementing Montessori at home with your children, then you might also consider subscribing to my channel. This way you don't miss a new video. My new book, The Montessori Home, Create a Space for Your Child to Thrive, is now available in paperback, ebook, and as an audiobook on Amazon and in all major book retailers. I also have several e-courses, an online community just for Montessori parents, and I do also offer live video consultations. So links to all of those resources are in the description box down below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Thank you.